What do we believe? We believe the ultimate truth is the pursuit and acceptance of truth itself, whatever it tells of our world and of ourselves. For only upon the foundation of reality, of what is, of truth, may we live lives worthy of living, which can only mean no more, no less, than to stop the spoilers, stop the spoilers, and thus win a last, a doomsday reprieve for our planet and all its creatures. What do we see? We see planet Earth, the domain and dominion of this sadly misaligned being of destruction and waste known as humanity, known as we. We see this captive planet has become a smothering, polluted, poison place. We see the victims, the countless victims, and among them we see those unwary, unknowing innocents of the wilds trapped or shot down or crushed into bloodied roadside forms or writhing in poisoned agony. And there too we, Ozentic Farm, have found our careless playing pets for whom we dug teeny graves. Pokey and Poconella and a large deep one for Quince. Quince, what is Quince? Ah, Quince, the silver prince, young joy of animal wit and pleasure, his laughing run each day his and our treasure, to hunt the hills, the rabbit and squirrel and hare, his carnivorous way, as each of we creatures our hour, our day, our survival way, pure into nature's plan, is all we can, no more, no less. But nature's plan was hellishly distorted. Quint's life was diabolically aborted. Stop the spoilers. To his grave he was carried and buried, you ask? Yes. His fine soul seared to ash. His great flesh to rot and spoil in worm food soil. One late spring day, we watched Quince play across Zendig Farm, now joyfully fondling, mauling, and tossing his toy rag doll, now joyfully tail wag chasing with puppy friends and guppy puppy love. His eternal delight for the thrill of life has become ours, our delight. Ah, but here, here on that same late spring afternoon, we see his play laughingly inane, has gone insane. Running, running, smashing full flight headlong into trees, running, running, crazed circles, tumbling our hives of bees. And Errol cried, it's that poison, that government poison Farmer Smith put out, that poison. Stop the spoilers. We call desperate and pleading upon the phone, and a voice, a bureaucratic robotic drone, spoke of pest control, of regulation of mice and squirrel, of sodium, sodium fluoroacetate 1080, a death potion, a lethal and irreversible, no antidote devised, no antidote, I quote, no antidote. And we see Krentz running glint-eyed, froth-mouthed in tightening swirls, his voice a descending, screaming siren of pain, running the farm fields that were bliss to him, running now, running these circles of death, a searing fire of acid unquenchable in vein and brain. What had done this to him? Sodium fluoroacetate. 1080. Amen. Quince the hunter had found this day an easy prey. A squirrel that too had run screaming and dying this very way, this very day. Let's pray. And Quince too would now so die. Not nature's way, but man cruel's way. 
sodium flow acetate, 1080. And the voice, the robotic drone, spoke. No antidote. A voice on the phone, I quote. No antidote. Stop the spoilers. And I, I wailing my own uncontrollable anguish, knew, knew that same ignoble, unreasoning slaughter of wounded knee had come to our creature friend for we to know and see. And though my weeping to be knowing and seeing the horror of his irrevocable destruction and our irrevocable loss, I called, Quince, Quince. And I opened the porch door, the door into his home, this place of comfort, of comradeship during his brief time upon this earth, this earth, this once pristine place. Through the door, the door that had always led to sanctuary, quince hurdles and pain blind crashes into a kitchen wall, a crash that trembles the house. Unseeing he runs, furniture, chairs and a table not flying, a shambles of clattering utensils and breaking dishes, a shattered aquarium of flopping fishes frantic sliding lunges from room to room, topple closet bucket and broom, across beds, frenzy tangled in blankets and sheets, careening through the bathroom door and into a filled tub awaiting a bather. Crazily he tries to submerge himself, submerge the pain. A frenzy of splashing exploding water drenches walls and ceiling but the lethal vein fire, brain fire, burns only hotter. He screams, and water drenches the rooms as he runs again to flee the unquenchable flame. Ah, you're dying, Quince. Ah, you're dying. And this huge canine whose life and now his death is mine, springs, launches into my arms. Could this friend, this patriarch, his human pack leader, save him. And together we tumble neath a table, and within his ever-tightening, whining siren of pain, he bites savagely upon the table's iron legs, as a wounded soldier bites a bullet. With foaming jaws he gnaws upon iron, and our eyes, our eyes are close. Mine, my eyes, filled with the helpless sorrow and tragedy of this great beast, this great friend's final, final moments. And his, his eyes, sparking, glinting with the impossibility of such pain. And lo, lo, there behind the spark and glint, I see still for me the love and gentleness I had so prized, teeth tearing and breaking themselves upon iron, and yet there's still love and trust for me, for me within his pain fire, melting, melting eyes. Stop the spoilers. I shout, someone get a knife and cut a piece of garden hose. Hurry, oh God, hurry. And a bag, a bag, a plastic bag. And the bag I take and slip over his shuddering head. One end of hose inside and the other over a gas outlet. And the gas begins to fill the bag and my hand remains inside fondling his ears. And my voice weeping, pleading, cooing. Don't fight it, sweetheart. Don't fight it. Let it take you. Let it take the pain. Oh, Quince, Quince, better that it was me. There was more joy in one day of your life than all of mine. I'm sorry, 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 sweet creature. And all his puppy friends and his guppy girl love come and smell his dying and with faint understanding whimpers lie there and wait. 
and the great silver creature slowly ceased his breathing and heart beating and went still and his eyes went dull. And I said, what was done here today, what was done to him equals any of man's greatest crimes. And Errol and I wept long and shameless at our forever loss, at the world's loss, at what fiend of nightmare had come visiting our farm, had come to end this great life and friendship. Good night. Good night, sweet quince. Good night. Good night, sweet prince. Stop the spoilers. <laughs>